Hare Krishna. So Krishna is describing the yoga ladder. In fact, the yoga ladder hasn't started. It will take time. The first thing that Krishna is describing now is Karma Kanda. What is this Karma Kanda? Karma Kanda is basically a business which people do in general. I'm sure most of us might have done before before uh, started uh, reading Bhagavad Gita or started practicing Krishna consciousness. So how is this business hap- how how does this business happen? We go to the temple and then we have a huge list of various desires that we have in our heart which we have penned down on the paper and then we go to the some devi devta in the temple and then read out whatever we need and then we say that i'll give you this give me this and the business is also unfair how is the business i'll give you two coconuts and you fulfill this <laughs> this is karma kanda but then this is the degraded karma kanda of the degraded age of kali yuga but there is something very very um, elaborate procedure when it comes to karma kanda also so let's see what krishna wants to tell about karma kanda in bhagavad gita this is the first time we are discussing something about karma kanda especially related to the devi devtas so we are discussing shloka number 11 devan bhavayata nena te deva bhavayantu vah परस्परं भावयन्तः श्रेयः परम अवाप्स्यथ हियर बेसिकली कृष्णा इज डिस्क्राइबिंग हाउ द एंटायर यूनिवर्सल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वर्क्स सो इन द प्रीवियस श्लोक इफ वी रिमेंबर सो कृष्णा वाज सेइंग दैट द क्रिएटर सेंट फोर्थ द जनरेशंस ऑफ मेन एंड डेमी गॉड्स अलोंग विद द प्रोसीजर ऑफ यज्ञ एंड हियर इज कंटिन्यूइंग नाउ what is krishna saying devan bhavaya ta anena so he is saying that the demigods devas the various devi devtas how many devi devtas are there 33 crore devi devtas so what is he talking about devan bhavaya bhavaya ta bhavaya tan so he is saying that being pleased the devi devtas being pleased by what anena by the sacrifice by the yagyas hmm. what will happen te deva all those devi devtas what will happen bhavayantu vah they will please you now since you have pleased them now they will please you parasparam bhavayantah by such cooperation between the men and demigods what will happen shreyah param avapsyatha by this people in general or you o arjuna will attain the supreme benediction you will prosper like anything a very nice shloka in fact it needs a very very great detailed discussion to understand various aspects of it let's understand the position of devi devtas first demigods now sometimes people mistake this word demigod they feel we are calling it as dummy god it's not dummy god it's demigod demi means demigod means the beings who are higher than all the human beings we are nowhere in comparison to those devi devtas but then all those tetis koti devi devtas 33 crore devi devtas they are below krishna in their designation in their power in their supremacy and they all together unanimously accept krishna as a supreme personality of godhead now whenever devi devtas are worshiped in fact we'll see that in 7th chapter 9th chapter krishna is going to describe very in a very great detailed manner how this entire thing happens so i'll just give a gist of it so whenever the devi devtas are worshiped what happens when they become pleased with us they get the power from krishna to give the benediction and they give the benediction to us so this is the procedure now in short in short how this happens now here in this particular text let's see what is propa telling in the purport position of devi devtas so they are the empowered administrators of material affairs so they are the different different ministers like we have the water minister like we have indra 
our rain minister indra water minister varuna and then we have the power minister that is surya and then we have the education minister saraswati and then we have a finance minister kuvera so in this way you know we have got various ministers so they are given some specific role to play in this universal administrate administration 33 crore ministers can we imagine this is called a huge universal administration under the supervision of supreme personality of god at lord shri krishna and then what are they doing they supply the supply of air light water and all other benedictions for maintaining the body and soul of every living entity is entrusted to the demigods so they are the ones who are maintaining they are the ones who are providing various things innumerable assistants in different parts of the body of the supreme personality of godhead see these devi devatas are not separate entities they are actually part and parcel of the supreme personality of godhead in fact you know these different devi devatas they are the different parts of the body of supreme personality of godhead hmm? now we need to understand that okay this is the position of devi devatas but how to please them hmm? obviously nowadays no one cares to please anyone it's like all about free okay i'm getting it for free let let me enjoy but then the vedic scriptures does not talk about that whenever we take something we give back so here when we are taking so many things from devi devtas we are indebted to them like for example suppose if sun god he gives the power bill to us <laughs> just imagine what will be the cost of that uh, you know or what will be the price that will be mentioned in that hmm? the power bill will not be able to pay and what if the sun god says if you don't pay i'll not give and i'll not give the sunlight or sun heat now here we need to understand that under the guidance of krishna the sun god is working and he is doing you know various uh, activities providing uh, various service to all the living entities but at the same time i'm just giving the example of sun god like that we have all the devi devtas so at the same time even we have a role to play and what is that role we have to please them how to please them is a question and here prabhupada is saying the pleasures and displeasures are dependent on the performance of yagnas by the human beings so how these demigods can be pleased by doing different yagnas now there are specific yagyas for specific demigod hmm. so this has to be very clear it's not that everything is nowadays people just dump all the photos of demigods in one uh, altar and you know just you know do some incense uh, and uh, maybe some flower here and there that's it done no there's a huge procedure that is there hmm. in fact in this age of uh, kali no one is doing proper demigod worship also <laughs> because here it's very clear by doing a particular yagna we can please a particular demigod there is no combined effort anywhere and here it is given that lord vishnu is worshiped in all the yagyas as chief beneficiary see even if the yagna is meant for pleasing a particular devta suppose you know it's done for pleasing indra like you know various yagnas are there for that now if it is for pleasing indra then only indra should be worshiped in that but in all the yagyas that are mentioned in the vedic scriptures shaligram shila which is the bona fide form of the supreme personality of godhead lord vishnu or krishna is worshiped first and even when the yagna starts the first ahuti that is offered is for lord vishnu another thing which i was observing in one of the yagyas was even if the devi devtas names are chanted it will be preceded by a syllable om like for example om ganesha aya namaha om rudra aya namaha so om this syllable om what does it represent krishna says in bhagavad gita 7 chapter pranava sarva vedeshu he is saying that i am that syllable om <laughs> so here it's very clear we do any yagya for any personality any dev devtas first ahuti or the first offering that is done or the invocation that is done is for lord vishnu hmm. now 
why Vishnu? There's a question. Why Vishnu? And here it is given that he is the Yajyapati. Do we remember what did we discuss in the last sloka? There Vishnu was called as Prajapati. Mm-hmm. And we discussed the meaning of Prajapati also. He is the maintainer. He is the protector of all the living entities. At the same time, Bhoktaram Yajya Tapasam. He is the benefactor of all the Yajyas. He is Yajyapati. He is the one who is supposed to accept all our offerings. So here it is given that the ultimate satisfaction of Yajyapati is the chief purpose of all the Yajyas. Now the question is, so... Okay, if if I'm supposed to please Vishnu, then why am I supposed to do all the Devi Devtas Yajna? This is a question which only intelligent people will ask. And the answer is, yes, there is no need of any Yajna of any other Devi Devta. Why? A very beautiful shloka from Srimad Bhagavatam, which says, Taror eva mula nisechane na tripyanti tat skanda bujopashakaha this particular shloka says, Taror eva mula nisechanena. Now, if you want to water the tree, what will do? I start sprinkling on every leaf and every branch and flower and fruit of the tree. We're going to water the roots of the tree. And when the roots of the tree are watered, the entire tree will flourish. And... When it comes to feeding this body, what do we do? Oh, the hands have done so much of work, let me feed the hands. We don't do that. What do we do? We put the food inside the mouth which goes into, inside the stomach. And when the stomach is satisfied, the entire body is nourished. And if we remember, we started our discussion saying, all the Devi Devtas, they are a part of Krishna's body. If Krishna is satisfied, automatically all the Devi Devtas are satisfied. Now see, we don't have time to do yajyas for each and every Devi Devta. We are indebted to everyone. 33 crore Devi Devta. So the intelligent person will be the one who would understand, let me water the root. Let me not sprinkle water on the leaves and twigs and flowers and fruits of the tree. So that's what is mentioned here. That when the yajya pati is satisfied, automatically all the Devi Devtas are satisfied. Now, what happens when we do yajna? When we are doing yajna for pleasing the yajna pati, that is Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, what happens? Very, very technical flowchart that is given here. Ahara shuddha. First thing that happens is when we do yajna, ahara shuddha. The food becomes sanctified. Next, sattva shuddhi. So, what is sattva shuddhi? Once existence becomes purified. When food is purified, second is once existence becomes purified. And then it is given. Sattva Shuddhav Dhruva Smritihi. Now, the purification of existence, finer tissues in the memory become sanctified. So, the finer tissues in the memory, they become sanctified, purified. And after that, what happens? Smriti Lambhe. Then, the person with a sanctified memory starts thinking about the ultimate goal of human, human life, that is liberation, breaking the cycle of birth and death, attaining Krishna. Mm-hmm. And by this what happens? Sarva granthinam vipra mokshaha. So, all these combined together lead to Krishna consciousness. Finally, the person breaks the cycle of birth and death and attains Krishna, goes back home, back to Godhead. Mm-hmm. Now, as we discussed all this, now the question might be, why is Krishna telling them, please demigods? Why Krishna is saying, that do sacrifice, please demigods, they will be pleased, they will please you. Why is he saying that in this shloka? This shloka which is there, or in fact the section that we are discussing, Karma Kanda, is not for devotees. It's for materialists. They don't have faith in Shastra. They don't have faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Somehow to get faith in the Shastra, And somehow to get a service mood in those people, Vyasadev, very beautifully, in Vedic scriptures he has given various yajnas, which are none other than the different business business tactics, you know, which are given. That if you want this, do this particular yajna. If you want this, do this particular yajna. 
what happens when a person starts doing this? He does the yajna, he gets the result. He does the yajna, he gets the result. And by this, slowly and steadily, he starts getting faith in the scriptures. And then he starts reading more and more and more. And then he gives up all that and just worships Krishna to attain the ultimate perfection of human form. Mm -hmm. So just to build the faith of those people who are faithless, this particular uh, type of sacrifice, which are meant for Devi Devtas, is given in the Shastra. But when it comes to devotees, when it comes to the intelligent ones who have understood the goal of life, they need not do all this. Mm -hmm. why, why, why to you know, just uh, go around? Mm -hmm. We'll go straight. You know, the goal of life will march straight towards the goal of life. And that is pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as we have spoken in previous verses also, the yajna for the age to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Sankirtan yajna that is chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Just by chanting this Hare Krishna Mahamantra every single day, we are pleasing the Yajnapati, who is Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. And if He is pleased, all the Devi Devtas are pleased. And as I already said, we are indebted to all the Devi Devtas. And when we please Krishna, we are no more indebted to anyone. Now Krishna is going to elaborate more on this particular topic of how the desires are fulfilled by doing yajna. A very important subject matter you know, that we are discussing. So let's see the next topic in the next video. Hare Krishna.